In this tutorial, we're going to show you how to import a flat relief model and unwrap it onto a column. We'll walk you through the process of importing in the flat 3D model into a rotary session, and then we'll show you how to toolpath it so you can create the part that you see here. So for this demonstration, we're actually going to need to create a new file. So let's come up to File and Close. Okay, so let's create that new file. So let's click on Create a New File. And let's look at our job setup. So we're going to have a rotary job setup and we're going to be looking at importing a 3D model. And then we're going to wrap it around our rotary job. And that has quite a lot of utilizations. For example, you could use it in a column, which uh, I can link in the description below for you because there's a tutorial on how to create a column and that also uses some 3D clip art. You could also create a table leg, for example. There's many decorative properties uh, to this type of tutorial that you can apply in other places. But for now, let's have a look at the rest of the job form. So our job size is going to be 12 inches. Our diameter is four inches. Of course, our unit is also going to be in inches. Our Z0 position is off the cylinder axis, and that is because I'm not quite sure my material on my machine is actually uh, even all the way around or a smooth surface all the way around. I think it's actually got some uneven parts to it. So with that, I'm going to choose a cylinder axis. Now, if my material had already been machined down to uh, a specific depth, so I knew the cylinder was perfect all the way around, or there was a specific um, diameter all the way around, then I would use a cylinder surface. But in this case, I'll keep the cylinder axis. Our XY datum is going to be in the bottom left-hand corner, and my orientation is set to along the x-axis. Now, you can always check how your machine will wrap on your rotary machine by either consulting your machine manufacturer or by simply looking at the machine. You may be able to discern uh, which axis is being wrapped just by looking at it. But if you're ever unsure, please do contact your machine manufacturer and they'll be happy to let you know. My modeling resolution will be very high. And finally, my material settings will be set to Canadian Maple. So with that, I'm just going to click OK. OK, so with our job set up ready to go, we can now have a look at um, some further details. So let's tile our views vertically by clicking this button on the top right here. And I'm just going to turn on my material block. So click this button just here. And there we are. You can see our job dimensions that we set up earlier. So this is the length. Our diameter here. If you look in the bottom left hand corner of the software, you'll see the parameters for it. Just down here where my mouse pointer is, it says job dimension. So you've got your width 12 inches. You've got the depth of two inches, which is actually our diameter. So it's two inches from the center to the edge here, and then two inches from the center to the edge here. So that's four inches in total. And you'll notice what it's done with our diameter is it's given it a value of 12.5664 inches for the circumference. So it's wrapped it around here to give us that value. But it's just something interesting to know and to take note of when you're looking at doing any sort of rotary job. Okay, so now we can now look at importing our 3D model. So let's just come up to the top left here and click on modeling. And we're going to click on this button just here, import component or 3D model. Now, as you can see, I've opened up my tutorials folder where my floral drop file is located. Now this is actually created in another piece of software. So that means it's not native to our software. And that's an important thing to note because as you'll see when we now click on this, it's opened up our import 3D model form and that's because the software knows that this file was not or this model was not native to our software therefore it opens this form up so we can make some adjustments to get this to look right within our software now you'll notice that when it's been imported currently it's set to full 3d model now you can see in our view on the right hand side here that's not quite what we want we actually want it to be a flat model that is much more appropriate for what we're going to be uh, doing in just a moment. Now, on the next section of the form, you can look at the initial orientation. Now, currently it's at the top, but you can cycle through these to see what they look like. So let's go to back, left, bottom, front, right. But out of all of these, top is the one that we're going to need. And we're also going to rotate this by plus 90 degrees because that way, this will now sit along the x-axis of our cylinder, which means it will be set the right way along our axis. Now, we don't need to worry about interactive rotation on this one for the moment. 
but I am going to change the model scaling here. I'm going to scale this up to nine inches so I can use the most amount of the space we have in X that I can because I want this to be along the majority of my rotary job. So I'm going to change this to nine inches for the X value here, but crucially, I'm also making sure that the lock ratio option has been checked because that will then also scale the Z and the Y values automatically when I change this X value just here. So I'm going to change this to nine. And there we are, that looks great. You can see that it scaled it up in X, Y, and Z for us automatically. But importantly, it has used the majority of the space in X here, which I'm very happy with. So with that, I'm happy with how that looks right now. So I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. Okay, so now you can see that we've been given a warning and it's going to suggest that we should actually add in a modeling plane so that our model won't be distorted. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'm going to show you in a second what would have happened if we didn't do that. So let's just click yes for now. Now you can see in our 3D view on the right here that you've got uh, the model uh, placed on the cylinder. And that looks pretty great at the moment. But like I said a minute ago, I was going to show you what would happen if we didn't have that zero plane. So to do that, I'm just going to pop over to the toolpaths menu. And I'm going to click on this set button here under material setup. And we're just going to have a look at this section here, the model position in the material. Now, currently our model thickness is set to almost half an inch. I'm just going to round that off to be uh, exactly half an inch. I'm going to apply that and click close. Okay. And I want my uh, model to be at the very top of the surface here. Now, on this picture here on the left hand side under the model positioning material, this kind of light beige color actually represents our model. And this darker brown kind of color represents the actual center of our cylinder here. It's, it's uh, the middle of our cylinder here. Now, you'll notice that the model thickness and the modeling plane add up to two inches, which is half of our diameter. Now, if I grab this slider here and I move the model down, you'll notice it gets quite distorted. And if I move it down again, you'll notice it gets even more distorted. Now, if I move that down all the way to the bottom, that's what you would have seen if I did not include a modeling plane. So that's why it's really important that we include that modeling plane, because if we don't, this is what you're going to get, a very distorted looking model. So let's just push our model back up to the top here and let's just cancel that for the moment. Okay, so with that explained, I'm now going to pop over to the drawing tab because now we're going to look at adding in some coves to either side of our worksheet here, which will then mean our coves will wrap around our rotary job here. So we'll profile those out when we come to toolpath it later. So in our drawing tab, we're just going to select this tool here, the draw line slash polyline tool. I'm just going to snap the top left hand corner, come across roughly about 0.5 inches there. I'm going to click on that, come down to the bottom, click here, and I'm going to right click to close out that form. Now with that still selected, with our new vector still selected, we can hit Control, Shift, and H on our keyboard. And you'll notice it has now shifted across and created a copy for us on the other side. So to do that again, it's just Control, Shift, and H on your keyboard. Okay, so with that all set up, we can now have a look at toolpathing our uh, coves and our 3D model here as well. So let's pop over to our toolpath menu. And as usual, the first thing we want to do is make sure our material setup is correct. So let's click on set. So our diameter is four inches. That's correct. Our X, Y datum is in the bottom left hand corner. Our Z zero is off of the center of the cylinder. Our model position. I'm just going to make sure that's at the very top of that slider. I'm just going to make sure this is set to 0.5 inches. Hit apply. Close out that form. Just slide that all the way to the top just to make sure that's the model is right at the top of our uh, material here. My rapid Z gaps above material, these are correct for my machine, but please do make sure that these values are correct for your machine. I'm just going to round that to 0.5 for my Z gap above material. And I'm going to hit OK. So now we're going to look at creating our toolpaths. Now, 
We're going to have three different toolpaths. We're going to have a 3D roughing toolpath, a 3D finishing toolpath, and a profile toolpath for our coves. So the first one we're going to look at is our 3D roughing toolpath. So if we just click this button here. The first thing we'll do is select our tool, which is going to be a quarter inch end mill. Now, I'm actually quite happy with these settings currently, but if I did want to change them for this job specifically, I can choose this edit button here to edit the settings for just this instance of this job. Now, if I wanted to change the settings permanently, then I would do it here, but just an important distinction to make. So let's now look at our machining boundary. We're going to use a model boundary. We're not going to have a boundary offset, but we will leave a little bit of material behind for our finishing pass. I'm going to use a Z level roughing strategy, profile set to last, order level by level. Don't need a raster ring on this one or any ramp plunge moves. I'm just going to call this one 3D roughing. I'm going to hit calculate. Okay, so there in blue, you can see our toolpath. Now, if I preview this, you may see that it briefly unwraps this, so it actually toolpaths that as a flat model, and then wraps it around again. And it's important that you take a look at your preview to make sure that this is what you expect when you go to machine it, because if it doesn't look right here, then it will not look right on your machine. But with that said, we can now look at closing this out and looking at our finishing toolpath. So let's pop up to the 3D finishing toolpath button. And in this case, I'm going to make sure I've got an eighth inch ball nose selected. Now, again, if you wanted to edit the settings for the ball nose just for this specific job, you can click edit here and you can edit these settings uh, to be what you need them to be. But in my case, I'm actually quite happy with these settings, so I'm just going to click cancel. And we're going to use the model boundary again as our machining limit. We're not going to use a boundary offset, but I'm going to use a raster strategy this time. And I'm not going to put an angle on it because currently what it will do is it will raster along the x-axis. So it will go up here, get to the end, go over by a step over distance, go back down again, go over by a step over distance, go back up again, and so forth. But if I change this value to say 90 degrees, what would happen instead is that the, the tool would go around, and then step over, around, go over, around. And I don't really want to do that. I want to go along the x-axis instead. So I'm going to keep that at zero degrees. But I will rename this toolpath as the 3D finishing toolpath. I'm just going to hit calculate. Now, you may notice that this takes a little while to calculate because we've actually got a much more dense toolpath this time. We've got a smaller tool as well. So it just takes a little bit of time to calculate. We'll be dealing with all the uh, material that we left over from our roughing pass as well. So the software just takes into this into account and it will calculate this for us and give us a nice detailed finish when this is all done. Now, it's also important to note that at this stage, again, if there's anything wrong with your preview, it's best to address it now because if there's anything uh, that looks uh, incorrect on your preview, then more than likely it will also look incorrect on your machine as well. So with that said, I'm just going to preview all these toolpaths. I'm just going to reset the preview first. I'm going to preview all toolpaths, and you'll notice it'll run it in this order. It'll run the 3D roughing first, then it'll do the 3D finish. So let's just click on that. And again, unwraps the uh, job, toolpaths it as a flat job, then wraps it back around again. And there we are. I think that looks quite lovely. That's re really, really nice. We've got some nice detail there from our finishing tool. So with our 3D tool pass done, we can now look at doing our code. So if I just close down this preview, I'm going to come back over to my 2D view. You've noticed I've got the second cove selected. I'm going to hold shift, left click on the other cove. So they're both now selected as represented by the dashed line there. And I'm going to come over to my profile toolpath. Now, I'm going to start at a depth of 0.5 because if you recall when we did our material setup and we looked at the model position, the model was 0.5 inches. So that represents the um, the depth of the model here. So we're going to go down to a cut depth of 0.25. And then as for my tool, I'm going to choose a different tool because I've got an end mill selected here at the moment, but I don't want an end mill. I want to use a half inch borners. I'm happy with these settings here. So I'm just going to click select. 
I'm going to machine this on the vectors. Uh, don't need to do a separate last pass, add any tabs to it or any ramps, but I will just call this profile coves. I'm just going to hit calculate. And there we are. You can see these blue lines here representing our toolpath. And again, let's just preview that selected toolpath. And there we are. That looks wonderful. We've got our coves at the end of our job here. And that has finished off really nicely. I think that looks really, really great as a decorative piece. Now at this stage, you could look at now saving off the output for these with your post processor. And to do that, I'll refer you to the great guide on uh, introduction to wrapped rotary text because that has a section at the end on how to save rotary uh, output for your machine. But for now, I will save our files. I'm gonna come up to file, save as, and I'm going to call this one Import and Unwrap 3D Model Toolpass. And I put Toolpass on the end because that way I know this is a file that's got all my toolpaths ready to go. So if I want to edit them in future or want to reuse this file, I've got it good to go. So I'm just going to click Save. And yes, I want to overwrite the previous version because this is now our latest version. And there we are. That's wonderful. That saved our file. And that now concludes our tutorial. So let's just look at our uh, model in our full view here and again I think that looks really nice as a decorative piece so I hope you found this tutorial very very useful and if you would like to learn more about rotary machining please do not hesitate to go over to our website and have a look at the tutorials there they're also available on our YouTube channel as well and I'll also pop some in the description below for you so you can have a look at some of those if they are of interest to you as well but as usual we thank you very much for your time and we look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.